If we do away with the police, who's going to save us the next time there's a big mass shooting? Let's talk about that on today's Hot Zone. This is the Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Hey folks, Chuck Holton here. Thanks for watching The Hot Zone and uh, thanks to all of our new patrons. We've had quite a few people signing up on patreon.com slash hot zone to support the podcast. You can do that for as little as $3 a month. Just buy me a cup of coffee every month and we can keep this thing going. Now, I wanted to talk some more about this de-policing movement that we've been talking about for the last couple podcasts because it is just so mind-boggling to think that there are people out there who are seriously pushing the idea that we should do away with the police. Now, as Tucker Carlson said the other night on his show, they are not actually pushing to get rid of all authority. They just want to try to collect more of the power for themselves, more of the authority for themselves. What they want to do is they want to dilute the police to the point where they ha they can put in these social workers, community organizers, things like that, that have the power to arrest you because you're having church in your house, because you are homeschooling your kids, because you're doing anything that doesn't conform to their far left agenda. And uh, obviously those pesky things called laws right now don't permit that. The constitution doesn't allow it, but this is just one more step and look, I, you, people will say that I'm being reactionary, that I'm over the top here, but look, I have so far been right in, unfortunately, in, in calling where they're going with this. Now, one thing that we have to think about is that if we do away with armed police officers in the United States and go to a social work model, what's going to happen when the next mass shooting takes place. What's gonna happen when we get a massive multi-cell attack in the United States and who's gonna, who's gonna respond to that? I, I, we've seen gun sales going through the roof over the last several months because of all the things that are going on in the United States. Do you think that defunding the police or pushing to defund the police is gonna put a stop to that? More and more people are going out and buying guns. And let me tell you something. If you are one of those people, A, congratulations. You're taking it, it matters into your own hands. That's good. But B, let me encourage you to go and get some training. Make it a priority. Put some money into training yourself to handle that firearm. And not just on how to handle it, but on the importance of legal issues. When you should pull your gun, what it means when you pull your gun, what the, the ramifications of that could be so that you'll have some files in the back of your head telling you what is the right thing to do if, for example, you see a guy beating on his girlfriend in the parking lot of a gas station, or if you see somebody stealing a car. Uh, we've had way too many uh, instances lately where somebody is committing a property crime, which is bad, and somebody decides, some concealed carrier decides they're gonna put a stop to it by pulling their gun and shooting the guy who's stealing a bicycle or a car. There's no car, no bicycle out there that's worth somebody's life get the insurance, do what you got to do. And you might say, well, there are some states where that's legal. That's true. But you need to know where you are, what is legal and what's not. So it's more than just going out on the range and popping off some caps. You need to get educated and trained if you're going to carry a firearm. And I highly recommend that you do. I want you to be educated and I want you to carry a firearm. Okay. So here is one good reason why we still need to have cops. I have spent a lot of time at a place called the Direct Action Resource Center in Little Rock, Arkansas. It's run by a friend of mine, former special operations guy. And this guy is taking cops who very often come at their own expense and training them 
on what to do the next time there's a massive multi-cell terror attack in the United States. Check this out. If you could get inside the nightmares of any law enforcement officer, this is what you'd see. A massive terror attack carried out on U.S. soil by a brutal, well-trained enemy, spreading chaos and carnage in a major metropolitan area. Scenes like this happen every year in places like Mumbai, Beslan, and Bali. The front lines of the war on terror aren't always overseas. Sometimes the war hits us here at home. Experts say it isn't a matter of if we have a massive multi-cell terror attack on American soil, but when. Carved out of 700 acres of farmland in rural Arkansas, Darcy was created to prepare us for that reality. The Direct Action Resource Center has made the name for itself, training America's most elite counter-terror teams with cutting-edge tactics gleaned from hard-won combat experience. America was uh, awakened, you know, 10 years ago with 9-11. Uh, with Those threats didn't go away. For one small group of former Special Forces troops, making sure we're ready to face the next terror attack has become an all-consuming passion. From it, the Direct Action Resource Center was born. As an international war correspondent, I spend lots of time every year following our heroes around the globe. Today, I'm going along with a team of law enforcement professionals as they go through what may be the most challenging, intense counterterrorism training available anywhere. The Law Enforcement Counterterrorism course is designed to give U.S. law enforcement officers the skills they need to respond to a terrorist event in their jurisdiction. Darcy started here in 1996 as a very kind of discreet, um, away from the flagpole, training facility for Special Operations Forces. Darcy's really taken the best of a lot of worlds and mixed them together to make what I consider one of the best, you know, close quarters battle or urban warfare scenarios, you know, that training and put it all together. Combating terrorism, especially for domestic law enforcement, is a paradigm shift. So they're used to a different style of day-to-day -day law enforcement. But when you're faced with a multi-cell terrorist attack, um, you have to be very aggressive to eliminate that threat. One of the defining characteristics about training at Darcy is its realism. The course features a number of highly motivated bad guys called op for, and they aren't shooting blanks. One of the things that they have to do is make this weapon able to fire the non-lethal training rounds that they use in these scenarios. Here, we have a blue painted training bolt. This enables the weapon to fire these non-lethal training rounds, but more importantly, it keeps it from being able to fire real rounds. So getting shot with some munitions can be a uh, pretty painful. It's an eye-opening experience. Obviously, they're designed to shoot other human beings, but they're not toys. The men get thrown into battle almost from the get-go, just like it would happen for real. In the event of a multi-cell terror attack, various law enforcement agencies would all converge on the scene and have to work together on the fly. We start um, immediately making the officers uncomfortable, um, stressed out, doing different things like that, putting them in situations. There was a group of people that they don't know that they have to, to work with. And within a few hours, they're put in a force-on-force -force situation in the dark, not able to hear, their vision's restricted, their breathing's restricted, their auditory intake is restricted, um, fighting highly aggressive opposition forces. The situations you get put in out here at Darcy are so stressful that, you know, when you get back home, you're, you're ready for it. Pain, chaos, and darkness are all good teachers, and it doesn't take long for the 21 heroes to start working together as a team. You can't be me focused in these type of operations. You have to be very mission and team focused at the end of the day, because you're the stopgap measure. You are the cavalry between them and, and the innocent people that are out there. This is a multi-cell terrorist attack within your jurisdiction. That's the purpose of this course. They fight their way into the building and begin to clear it room by room. The Op 4 makes them earn every square inch of territory. In last night's mission, this room was the scene of total chaos while a firefight raged just outside and the casualties kept piling up. The instructors threw a couple of curveballs into the scenario at the last moment, and that was intended to teach these guys that assumptions will get them killed. Everybody good? We got all our equipment? 
Do we have two? You guys fought your way back out of it, and you set up a, your defense, you got it done. There's some very, very smart, very uh, aggressive up four that we go up against, and that's really unique to Darcy. You don't have, I've never had that in any other training um, where you really need to fight these guys, and if you don't, you're gonna lose. Classroom training between runs helps iron out the wrinkles in their tactics and is used to bring in additional skill sets, like medical training. We train doctors, you know, surgeons, nurses, basically to deal with uh, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, most domestically and internationally. Tactical medic ain't getting to you, okay? That's where this stuff comes in handy. You guys have your own stuff. Rich Kay is an emergency room doctor from Connecticut who serves as a medic on his local SWAT team. This is the first time he's had to do his job under such extreme conditions. I haven't been through basic SWAT school and, uh, you know, not law enforcement. Uh, I'm not sworn. Um, for me, getting more exposure to the tactics, A, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Uh, and B, it gives me a better way to anticipate and help prepare to, you know, take care of the guys that I'm trying to take care of. Today, some of the biggest challenges they're going to face are really themselves. A lot of these scenarios, um, they're not scripted. You know, the role players have a lot of free reign, but they're going to make mistakes. Every day, the stress ramps up as the instructors throw in new surprises and exhaustion sets in. We're slowly dialing things up for them. Um, the days get a little bit longer, information gets more complicated. They're responsible for everything that we've shown them from day one. Plus, you know, they have to cooperate with each other in order to be successful. Every class says the same thing. They didn't realize how, how far they could, they could be pushed. It's been said that in combat, no plan survives first contact. And that's certainly true here. Last night's mission, the team faced their most difficult challenge yet and found out just how costly mistakes can be. A wrong turn by a team member resulted in a casualty and a captured man, and the team didn't find out until it was too late. But those mistakes being made here mean that they won't be making them in real life. And that's the point of the training here at Darcy. Many of these officers took vacation time and spent their own money to be here. Such is the depth of their commitment to their work keeping the rest of us safer. I've been here for about nine years doing this, and I feel so much more confident now of my abilities. It's the stress inoculation that you go through. Mm -hmm. Totally, if you do it a while, you, you won't believe the difference. When I go back to my job, I know that the confidence I get from training out here will bleed over and give you the confidence to do whatever needs to be done. You never know what type of situation you're going to be in. You don't want to get in a situation and I should have went to that school when I had the chance, but I didn't. Darcy is a really good step in the right direction to be able to get guys where they need to go. And uh, I want to ensure that they get everything that they need uh, in the skills to be able to uh, defeat whatever enemy that comes forward and then try to harm our citizens or our officers. You know, the United States is still at risk. I think that uh, most people uh, choose to ignore that fact or are just unaware and sometimes even by choice. But it's uh, very real, it's very present, and we should be ready for it. On the front lines in Little Rock, Arkansas, I'm Chuck Holton. So folks, that's not something that social workers and community organizers are going to be able to do. And there's one good reason why we all need cops and we need to appreciate the police we have. Uh, that's all I've got for today, folks. Thanks for watching the Hot Zone. I'll be back again in a couple days. We'll see you. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.